Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rukhah HaKodash, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, who are on the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from, and peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. Um, so I just want to do, you know, go into this, um, you know, another edition of News and Prophecy. <clears throat> this is coming from um, shtfplan.com, which, you know, they, they have, uh, you know, really good um, alternative uh, media, you know, articles and information, you know, that is uh, reliable, coming from reliable sources. So this first one is a plague of biblical proportions, you know, right? And this, this uh, title, you know, speaks for itself, all right, because of the times that we know that we are in. We are in the, in the days of the end of this world, all right? And and the Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, has spoken to the prophets, has spoken to his disciples, and has warned us of the things that were going to take place on the earth, you know, um, uh, um, coming before his return, or preceding his return. So, you know, this is how we know that, hey, you know, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is, you know, <laughs> going across the, 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 the four corners of the earth, man, because everybody's talking about, you know, biblical proportions or prophetic times or prophecies, you know, the, the uh, you know, the, the book of Revelation, all right, uh, the end of this world, all these things that, you know, when you see videos in, in the comments or, or tweets in the comment section of, you know, these uh, this regular everyday Babylonians, they're, you know, they have that type of rhetoric. Because the Bible is really the uh, um, is what governs the, the the course of the earth. All right, the the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, that governs the course and the actions of the earth. Let me get something real quick in the book of uh, Daniel, the um, fourth chapter, seventeenth verse. It says this. It says this matter is by the decree of the watchers. Okay, and who are the watchers? That's uh. You know, starting with the watchmen, all right, the, the prophets that the Lord has ordained from the foundation of the earth to be watchmen. Okay, and then you also have the angels, you know, who's who are watching. It says in the demand of the of the word of the holy ones, which are who the, the saints, okay, the ones who have made a covenant with the most high by sacrifice, <clears throat> which are the Israelites, okay, which um you know, starting at in this point, in this uh, in this age, I should say. You know, only really speaking of the um, the remnant, all right, of the Israelites, the elect. It says, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it, it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. Okay, so the Most High, so th this word, all right, the watchers, the 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 uh, the prophets, um, you know, the ones who who have the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of the most high and, and, you know, speak the words of the Lord. All right. All this is really for the intent that the living may know. All right. The ones, <laughs> and that's why the Lord told us to, you know, to prophesy to the wind. All right. Prophesy to the nations. This is in the book of Isaiah 34th chapter verse one says, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear. And all that is their rent, the world and all things that come forth of it. So when we prophesy, even though we're prophesying salvation to the elect of Israel, but the the words that we're prophesying, the, the end of this age is really going through going, you know, throughout the whole four corners of the earth. Whoever hears it, it, it uh, hears it. Whether you be a, a Israelite, whether you be uh, you know a, a Edomite, or whether you be a heathen. All right, because the war, because the heavenly Father dwelleth in the kingdoms, uh, dealeth, I should say, as it says here, you know, uh, dealeth and ruleth in the kingdoms of men. All right, so the whole earth is, you know, uh, uh, is going to feel the wrath of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and, and, and these plagues of, of biblical proportions is a part of the wraths. Uh, part of the wrath that the Lord said he's going to bring upon the earth. Let me get one more before I get into that. Just because I just remembered it here in the book of um, 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter. Actually, let me do what I typically like to do. 2nd Ezra, the eighth chapter, 
and we'll go to go down to the point uh, eight verse sixty one. It says, "And therefore is my judgment now at hand." Okay, the judgments, the mashapatim of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh are now at hand. All right, even though these things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning. They were written so that when the times, the 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 dispensation of times, you know, came to pass, manifested, the Lord would have His prophets, you know, during that time in that generation, breaking down what is happening in the world and linking it up to the prophecies that the Most High has spoken of from the beginning. All right, that's why in the book of Isaiah, I believe it's the 46th chapter, it tells you that the Most High, uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, Isaiah 46, verse uh, 9, remember the former things of old. Okay, and how do we remember the former things of old? Well, through the book of remembrance. When you read in the book of Malachi, the, the uh, third chapter, I believe, it speaks about the book of remembrance. And, and they that, you know, fear the Lord spake often one to another. And how and what are we speaking, you know, uh, often one uh, to another? The oracles that were written, okay, aforetime, all right, uh, um, specifying the things that were going to happen, you know, during these times, okay, a.k.a. the end time prophecies, which you know, encompasses the destruction of Babylon, the, 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 the judgments upon the wicked, okay, and the salvation that is, um, you know, uh, uh, given unto the elect of the nation of Israel that fought the good fight, you know, and, and, and kept the faith in these last days, enduring to the end. So it says, remember the former things of old. So once again, how do we remember the former things of old? By reading the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and, and often speaking one to another. And this is why we do these videos, these epistles, so that we can put one another into remembrance. And, you know, it's a lot here for jumping, but, you know, that's just how the spirit goes. So I shouldn't even really apologize for that. Um, second Peter chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This second epistle, beloved, I, I now write unto you, and both in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, you know, and that's what the that's why we do these things. That's why the Lord has put it on our spirits to uh, you know bring out this word, so that we can stir up the pure minds of the elect. Because this is really we do we're, we're enduring all these things for the elect's sake, even though this word is going throughout you know all nations. But our focus on you know getting this word and repenting, so that they can be sealed, is the elect. All right, the elect of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that was preordained from the foundation of the earth, starting with 144,000 to 12,000 men from the uh, from the uh, each of uh, 12 tribes of Israel. It says that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, right? And how do we know the words that were spoken by the holy prophets? Because they were written down. The Lord, like in Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, where the Lord told Ezra. Or address to, you know, uh, write these words because they are faithful and they are true. Okay, so it says, which was spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, which is who Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai also has given us that um, apostleship. Okay, uh, uh, that commandment because the word apostle means to be sent away, and He has given us also that commandment to be, you know, to to be sent away to uh, teach and warn. Um, uh, Israel, all right, and uh, about the coming, you know, wrath that is to come, okay, and to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we are in that same stead as well as the, you know, the 12 apostles, 12 disciples, which became apostles, and also, you know, Apostle uh, Paul, okay, uh, um, and, you know, his fellow um, servants, his fellow, uh, uh, you know, as, as he called them, his fellow laborers. So going back here, now in the book of um, Isaiah 47, 46, verse um, 9, it says, Remember the former things of old, for I am power and there is none else. I am power and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. So the Lord declared in the beginning how the end was going to uh, uh, you know, come to pass, how the end was going to uh, manifest. Right? It says, And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, things that are not yet done in what? Our, in, in, uh, you know, on our uh, timeline, because there is no end or beginning with the Heavenly Father, right? 
because he's the ancient of days, but he declared from the beginning of the timeline that he gave, you know, uh, mankind, he declared the, from the beginning what was going to happen at the end of, of, of this age, which the end of this age is really the beginning of our age, all right? You know, that's an, another lesson that I wanted to, you know, speak thinking about, you know, through the spirit, that the end is really our beginning. You know, the story, the end of Esau really starts the true story of the sons of God. Okay, because once we get into the kingdom, that's really, you know, I was talking, speaking to one of the brothers in our camp, and he have, you know, put it, you know, beautifully that, like, this is really just like the prologue for Israel, the, 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 the age of Esau, all right, the age of, uh, of our captivity and all these things is like when you read a book, it's really like the prologue of the story of, of the sons of God, the stories uh, of Israel. Because once Yahweh returns and establishes the kingdom on heaven, establishes the kingdom on, on earth, Um, so like if once um, Yahweh Shai um, establishes the kingdom on earth, that's really going to, you know, be the beginning of our our story of uh, uh, being gods and being, you know, uh, um, having the dominion over the earth and having that spiritual power and, and having, you know, being able to go out to the, the heavenly fathers. As Yahweh Shai said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. All right, uh, uh, having complete order, you know, in righteousness in our in, in our families. All right, our women be in order, our children be in order. You know, none of the curses being upon us. So that's really the story. That's why it says Esau is the end of the world, and, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. That is really going to be, you know, that everlasting a <laughs> uh, uh, book story that we're going to uh, play out. You know, uh, once this this side ends. Okay, so. It says, um, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So in a part of the Most High's pleasure is what? Is bringing the, 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 the destruction to the wicked, all right, and the salvation to the elect. That's why Yahweh Shai said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Okay, so let's run through this real quick. This is uh, says plague of biblical uh, proportions. A billion sea creatures have been cooked to death by the blazing heat. All right, and, and if you don't know what heat that's talking about, uh, on the west coast there's a uh, heat dome which the meteorologist has coined it an omega dome, omega heat dome, um, which is basically you know uh, plaguing the uh, west coast with uh, historical um, heat, you know uh, temperatures. So it says, did you know that a billion sea creatures were just wiped out of the West Coast and they did not die pleasantly? And the historic heat dome that hit the Northwest like a freight train literally cooked them to death. Needless to say, this is not normal. In fact, we have never, ever seen anything like this before. And, and you know, I love I love when they say things like that because that goes ties right to, to uh, prophecy. One of it, one of them is written here. In the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, first verse says, and at that time, Michael shall stand up. And it says, what time is that talking about? The, the time of the end. All right. And whose end are we speaking about? All right. We're speaking about the end of Esau's age. All right. The end of wickedness, you know, greatly polluting the earth. The end of, of the bases of men, you know, having dominion over the earth. The end of Esau, I mean, the end of Israel, you know, uh, being in captivity. All right. Uh, 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 being you know, serving our punishment. So at the at the time of the end, and at that time, the end time, Michael shall stand up, all right, the great prince, which stands for the children of, of that people, which is what? Uh, 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 a divine intervention, okay? Get ready to see, you know, we see the chariots, right? But get ready to, to, to see actual angels manifest to deliver you out of situations. But the thing is, in order for them to deliver you out of situations, you got to be in those situations. And that's why Yahweh Shai told us what? To be faithful until death. All right. Uh, uh, um, what is also written that um, in that same uh, verse and chapter, it says, uh, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Okay. So the suffering has to come. 
the, the persecution has to come in order for the divine intervention to take place in order to see, you know, angels come, you know, manifest themselves and deliver you out of uh, perils and tribulation. Okay. So it says that great prince which stands for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And what once again, that time is the time of the end. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book, okay, the, the Lamb's book of life. Those are the ones who the Lord is going to uh, uh, direct the, the angels to deliver at this time, to stand up for at that time, okay? And when you go into that word standeth, it means to protect, to save, or to deliver. So we're going to have spiritual uh, deliverance before we get the actual physical deliverance out of Babylon the Great. There's going to be situations that individuals, you know, believers are going to go through that is going that that the Lord is going to put them through so that they can be delivered supernaturally by way of divine intervention of, of angels or spiritual power being given at that moment. Okay. And this is something that, and why you, why reading the scriptures, the book of remembrance is so very uh, uh, integral and important because this is not something that is going to be, you know, abnormal to us in our history. Okay. Our heritage, you know, this has happened plenty of different times in, in, in our history. You know, this devil, he wants you to think that you have no history, that you have no, you know, uh, 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 legacy, but really you have the greatest legacy to, to ever be, you know, recorded in the history of mankind. When you think about our deliverance out of uh, out of ancient Egypt, that was by way of divine intervention. OK, we had a, 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 a we had help from a different realm come to deliver us, you know, from our enemies. You think about Samson. All right. You think about Gideon and, and the 300 men to go against a, 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 a whole army of an, a, other other men. The time of the Maccabees, where you had uh, angels come down and fought with, uh, I believe it was Judas Maccabee, one on his left side, one on his right side, shooting uh, arrows of lightning at at their at the at these other, you know, at our uh, at our adversaries, which were which were other nations, man. Angels literally came down and shot arrows of lightning. To, to to assist us in our you know victory against our adversaries. So how much more in this in this last time where we don't have an army? You know, at least the Maccabees, you know, they had you know uh, 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 a, a you know people Israelites at that time that was ready to fight and go up you know and and, and fight against you know the enemies. But we don't even have that that type of uh, uh, capability to do so. We're at our our weakest point. Physically when it comes to trying to come up against our adversaries So that's why it's going to be a time as never before but the deliverance in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, Way that the Lord delivers us and shows that he is with us is going to be a time like never before Samson killing a thousand people a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. That's going to be uh, uh, Microscopic to what the Lord is going to do during this time man all right, I believe the scripture tells you uh, tells us that in a book of I want to say either Deuteronomy or Leviticus, one of the five books, where it says that uh, 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 one shall chase a hundred, and two shall put uh, ten thousand to flight. Or uh, one shall chase a thousand, and two shall put ten thousand to flight. Man, two Israelites are going to be able to put ten thousand people to flight. You see, so yeah, these 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 the wrath is coming. The destruction is coming, the plagues are coming, but the Lord's uh, uh, showing, you know, his power, his miracles, his wonders, you know, are using us, Lord willing, we are part of that number, as vessels to show his power, that also is coming, man, and that is the, the glad tidings. That is the good news that, that us as being hopeful elect uh, uh, focus on, okay? We focus on the, the, the salvation. Yeah, we know that the destruction is coming. But as the angel told Ezra in uh, Second Ezra Salakia, I didn't finish this. Damn, the spirit. <laughs> as the angel told uh, Ezra, what? Um, be not curious of how the wicked shall be punished and when, but you know, be you know, be curious on how the righteous shall be saved. So let me finish this here. Second Ezra eight verse sixty one. It says, and therefore is my judgment now at hand. 
These things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee, which is who? The prophets. I, I, the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, now thou hast showed me the multitude of the, of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times, the end times, all right, the last times, the last ages, uh, the last age or, you know, time period of this world, Esau's world. But at what time thou hast not showed me? So he was asking specifically, like, when specifically a year, date, ever, time period this is going to happen. He says, and he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. Now this right here goes to show you that the angel, which was talking to Ezra, was letting Ezra know. And Ezra also knew, because he wouldn't have told him this if he didn't know, that Ezra would be on the earth again when these things happen. When, the, when, the, when, when these signs come to pass that show the end of this age. Because Ezra, the angel didn't tell Ezra, well, when you're long gone, there's going to be a time that these things are going to come to pass. No, he told Ezra, he said, he answered me then and said, measure. So this is a commandment. This is a, a, a something that the angel was telling Ezra to do. Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand <clears throat> that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Now, how would Ezra be able to measure if he would not be on, on the scene? Because this is us measuring the time, all right? Ezra would measure the time by way of doing what we are doing at this current juncture, at this time period that we are right now, watching the signs, watching what's going on in the world and measuring it diligently with what the Lord said that the, what was going to come to pass, okay? And then having that understanding that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So Ezra will have to be on the scene, will have to be on the earth to understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. If Ezra, and which means what? Ezra was uh, reincarnated back in the flesh at this time period uh, uh, um, when these things are happening so that he will be able to understand that it is the very same time. Why do you think in 2nd Ezra the 15th, the 16th chapter, he said, what? Woe is me. Woe is me. Who shall uh, deliver me in those days? Okay, what days was he talking about? The days of the end of this age, man. And we know Ezra was over 2,000, just about what? About uh, 3,500 years ago. You think there's a 3,500-year-old 3, year old man walking the, walking the earth right now? <laughs> no. Okay, but he came back in the flesh. You know, but that's once again, you know, uh, uh, that right there shows you that reincarnation is scriptural. So it says, therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, thou shalt well understand that the most high speck of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. OK, so the most high even spoke about these things before the time of Ezra. Why you think Enoch always well, tells you in the book of Jude? Seventh from Adam prophesied of the of the of the return of Yahweh Shai that comes with the thousands, you know, uh, the thousands of uh, 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 saints. I believe it says, if I'm not mistaken, in, in the book of Jude. Okay, because the prophets were always on the scene prophesying, man. All right, so let's go back into it. It says, needless to say, this is not normal. In fact, we have never ever seen anything like this before. Weather patterns. All over the planet are going absolutely nuts, and this having and this is having a devastating impact on many highly vulnerable ecosystems. I knew that the recent heat wave was really bad, but I didn't know that it has caused this much destruction. According to NPR, it is being estimated that a record high temperatures along the west coast killed at least a billion sea creatures. With the specific region hitting record setting temperatures in the last few weeks, a new study from Canada shows the heat waves enormous impact on marine life. An estimated 1 billion sea creatures on the coast of Vancouver has di have died as a result of the heat, a research researcher said. It is hard for me to wrap my mind around a billion sudden deaths. Why isn't the corporate media making a uh, making much big deal, much bigger deal about this? 
Can't they take a break from assessing over the latest political scandals just for a little bit so that they can report on things that really matter? A billion deaths is an unimaginable loss, but Professor Christopher Harley says that the true death toll is probable, probably even higher than that. But the number is likely to be much higher, said Professor Christopher Harley from the University of British Columbia. I've been working in the Pacific Pacific Northwest for for most of the past 25 years and have not seen anything like this here, he said. This is far more extensive than anything I have ever seen. Once again, unprecedented times, times like never before. OK, let's keep keep jumping. Um, so this is truly a disaster of biblical proportions. When are people finally going to start waking up? According to Harley, when, the sur when he surveys the immense carnage along the coastline, it feels like one of those post-apocalyptic movies, okay? And when you read the book of Revelation in, in the, in the uh, Spanish, all right, the title is uh, uh, Apocalypses, okay? So that's, and that's what the, 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 the times that we're in, man. We're in a times of apocalyptic events happening. It says, it just feels like one of those post-apocalyptic movies, says Christopher Harley, a marine biologist at the University of British Columbia, who studies the effects of climate change on coastal marine uh, ecosystems. Of course, we have we have witnessed a lot of bizarre plagues lately, haven't we? Just last week, I wrote about countless birds of sudden uh, are suddenly dropping dead from a mystery, mystery disease in Washington, D.C. and nine eastern states. Okay, now he's about to, you know, basically uh, list a bunch of different plagues that are happening, you know, specifically here in Babylon the Great, which once again goes exclusively with the prophecies that the Lord said was going to happen before he returns. It says, in last week, I wrote about the millions of grasshoppers that are relentlessly eating crops in seven western states. Colossal hordes of ferocious grasshoppers are on a rampage and some of the swarms are so large that they are actually being picked up on radar. Okay, and, and you have the scriptures that, once again, back that up, man. You know, and, and uh, beloved brother, uh, elder, uh, elder brother Yashawamba had posted this on one of my uh, pages, I mean, one of my channels. And I'm like, yo, man, the Lord, <laughs> Lord don't miss. He does not miss. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 5. Also, when they shall be afraid of that, which is high, and fear shall be in the way. And that's what's happening, man. Fear is in the way. Fears are in the way for the, for people, you know, that are not rooted in, uh, and have the understanding and wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shot. They got, you got the fear of the heat. You got the fear of the, 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 the pandemic, the different variants. You got the fear of these grasshoppers. You got the fear of the famines. You got the fear of, uh, uh, of, uh, other people, you know, because, because, you know, uh, Death and gun. They, I, I did a video a couple, like a couple, a month or two ago, where it says gun um, homicides are at an all time high. Okay, you got the fear of uh, uh, you know these um, supernatural or you know what they say natural disaster events. Okay, so it says fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. All right, the grasshopper shall be a burden. So that's why you that's why you seeing right here, and, and and we know that according to you know the scriptures that the Lord uses you know insects what He did with uh, ancient Egypt with the locust plague. All right, He uses insects as a plague. All right, and and grasshoppers and and, and locusts they're not the same, but they have similar qualities. And, and one of the main qualities are is that they can eat, you know, a, a, a lot more than, you know, a typical animal. All right. They eat a lot. Uh, they, they say they have insatiable appetite. And when you go into that word insatiable, basically meaning un, unfilled. All right. They can't be, um, let's see, insatiable. It says of an appetite or desire impossible to satisfy, okay, and that and that's what locusts and, and grasshoppers have. That's why they continuously, uh, you know, eat. They just go from one spot to the next, just continuously eating. And especially if the spirit of, of the Lord puts put it uh, puts them, you know, in that mind frame, you know, 
And these things are not coincidental, man. But if you don't have the eyes to see, if you don't have that eye slav to understand what's going on, that day is going to overtake you like a thief. So it says, but don't worry. We are being told that it's just a coincidence. See, and that's what this devil does, man. Tries tries to, you know, downplay the prophecies of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai coming to pass. But you can't, man. You, you can't avoid it. And that's why the scripture says, ultimately, the powers are going to stand in fear. Because it's going to get so crazy. It's going to get so eerie and bizarre and spooky and, and wrathful that they're not going to be able to just to try to throw out the words like coincidence and, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, we got everything under control. No, it's going to be out of your control. All right. Completely out of your control. And, and, and it's out of your control now, but you you still have the ability to put to, to set up a narrative as, as though you are in control. But soon it's going to get to a point where your narrative is not even going to be slightly believable it says um it says so uh, that so many bizarre things are happening all at once and we are being assured that everything will go back to normal very soon you can believe that if you like on top of everything else now we are learning that mosquitoes that carry west now virus have been detected in six different states it says mosquito bites are annoying at best and at worst can lead to illnesses like malaria, Zika virus, and West Nile virus. Uh, new reports show at least six states are detecting mosquitoes that carry West Nile virus. And humans have contracted the disease in four of these places. And in the four of those states, they have, there are already been confirmed cases of humans testing positive for the virus. According to the CDC, Arizona, Arkansas, Illinois, and Iowa have confirmed cases of in cases in humans. In New York, officials informed residents on July 2nd that two groups of mosquitoes tested positive for West Nile virus in Rockland County. No humans have been reported as con contracting the disease in New York. So let me get this straight. Mosquitoes are testing positive for West Nile virus as far east as New York and as far west as Arizona. And this and this is the first we are hearing about it. Once again, man, because these plagues are, are ramping up, all right, one after the other. It's like every week there's more and more plagues. And, and I just had a, a breaking uh, news article, um, tweet, I should say, that um, over there in, you have uh, the FDA inspect, uh, inspected to an, uh, expected to announce that the J&J &J, uh, jab juice has been linked to a serious but rare side effect called Gillian Barr syndrome, in which your body's immune system attacks your nerves. So, these things that people are are they're they're, they're you know they're, now they're going door to door with this right, having people take this juice, but now they're coming out because remember the FDA has not yet approved the the, the juice as you know uh, um, something that can be uh, given. It's it's on, it's really only under a federal emergency. It's not under the FDA approval, okay? And now they keep coming out. You know, yeah, last week or two weeks ago, they came out with the, the heart, you know, inflammation in young people. And now you have um, the FDA just came out to announce that the J&J &J juice has a is, is linked to a serious but rare side effect called Gillian's Barr syndrome, which it says in which your body's immune system attacks your nerves. So what the hell are they talking about? And I got something else, you know. To, to, to back, you know, what, what they're doing with this whole, um, this whole this scheme when it comes to this. Oh, hold on. I got something else coming up. Hey, and that's how the Lord was, hey, man, the scripture tells you that, that these, that these, uh, uh these, uh, um, prophecies are going to come and not slack, man. And as I'm reading that, I just had something else just pop up. Just came up 2, 13 PM. It says just then Macron, which is the president of, um, if I'm not mistaken, of France. Yep, of France. It says Macron announces mandatory uh, Crown Royale uh, vaccinations for all healthcare workers beginning July 21st, and adds, "We will probably have to think about the mandatory vaccination of all French citizens at some point." All right, at some point, and these people are all in cahoots, man. They are all working with the beast system. NATO, the EU, they're all working together. All right, which that great, which that whore being on top of, of the beast, which is Babylon, the great America. So if this is happening in those different countries, those Westerns, Westerners, Westernized countries in Europe, 
understand and trust and believe that that's going to happen here. You already had uh, Sleepy Joe said that they're going to do it, you know, make it mandatory for all the military, okay? And that's how they move it, man. And all these things that were cons so-called conspiracy theories a year ago, it, it, what are they now, man? All you naysayers and all you scoffers and reprobates, you know, scorners that were saying, that, oh, y'all just, you know, y'all just, uh, here y'all go with y'all y'all nutty uh, theories. <laughs> what, what can you say now, man? All right? The Lord is undefeatable. And we are coming in the name of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shah. So let me read this, Ezekiel 12, verse 24. It says, I'm going to start at 23. It says, tell them thus saith, oh, so no, 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 verse 21. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is the proverb that, that ye have in the land of Israel, saying the days are prolonged and every vision fail? Yeah, because you, and so I've been hearing that, you know, in these churches growing up. Oh, they've been talking about the end of the world since you know, my grandmother's time. Yeah, I've been talking about Jesus. Say, they say Jesus, right? Yeah, I've been talking about Jesus coming back since, the since you know, my grandmother been saying that, you know? So the days are prolonged and, and every vision faileth. But guess what? We're speaking now in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and clearly things are happening, man. All right? So now it says what? Verse 23. Tell them, therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, I will make this proverb to cease. And that's why you don't see a lot of people coming and talking shit no more when we out there on highways and byways. You don't see a lot of people, you know, uh, coming up to scoff and, and calling us crazy and, and, and this, this, and that, which is why you got Esau now with his... um media you know uh demonization program that he's got going on trying to label us extremists and, and having the fbi coming out to say to snitch on people because the words that we're saying now are not uh, uh far-fetched anymore where well, they were never far-fetched but they're not far-fetched to the to the you know these low level uh babylonians because it's coming to pass right before their eyes they're seeing it uh, come to fruition so the Lord said, I will make this proverb to cease. Why? How did he make it to cease? By making these things manifest. By making them actually come to pass. It says, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. Yeah, you can no more say, oh, the days are prolonged. Oh, y'all been saying about a chip. Nah, nah, the chip is out. You see? Y'all been talking about, you know, uh, FEMA camps. Well, guess what? Now, okay, you got the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, prepare, prepare for mass public quarantine of unjuiced rural americans so what now okay the big i told you so is 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 at hand man <laughs> and we saying i told you so to the ones of you that did not want to listen and take heed because the one that you did take heed and listen hey all praises be to you about shimmy was shot but there's a there's a a, a a a number of israelites that have to know after death by pain because you didn't want to take heed. You wanted to scoff. You wanted to be simple and pass on. Where the Lord said what? The, the righteous, or the prudent. Uh, uh, let me get that real quick. Is that Proverbs 23? Proverbs 22. Yep, Proverbs 22, verse 3. It says, the prudent man foreseeth the evil. How does he foresee the evil? By having a vision that the Most High blessed, blessed us with. That's why the scripture says the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. The election have obtained the understanding of seeing something in, in, uh, before it happens. Okay? Whether it be by hearing the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and you taking heed, all right? Or the Lord, you know, blessing you with the understanding of the scriptures and then you giving that understanding out by, you know, prophesying and teaching it to the rest of the elect. But all in all, we foresee the bad times and hideth ourselves. And how are we hiding ourselves? Not in no bunker, not trying to go up into space, not trying to, you know, uh, gather up uh, uh, perishable goods and food items, which, once again, if you do do that, you're not wicked, but not putting your trust in that. Well, how, where are we hiding ourselves in? All right? We are hiding ourselves in, well, let me finish this, but the simple pass on and are punished. Are punished. We are hiding ourselves in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says, the name of Yahweh. Uh, Shem Yahweh Shai is a strong tower. Proverbs 18, verse 10, Salakia. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay? So we are safe by knowing the, the, the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and running, into, and running into that name, trusting the Lord to deliver us. Uh, let's get something else here. Where is that? That's Psalms 91. 
Yeah, Psalms 91, verse um, 2. It says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my, for my fortress, my power, and him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. But uh, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You see? So this this truth is what we are where we are hiding under. All right? Let me jump down to verse 9. Because thou hast made Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil bad time before befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. All right? So none of these plagues is going to come near us, man. Why? Because we have made Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his word and his truth our fortress, our refuge. We have believed on the Lord, man. It says, if because we have done that, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. Going back to Daniel's 12th chapter, Michael shall stand up, uh, the great prince, to keep thee in all thy ways. So yes, we're going to have angels, all right? Celestial, our celestial brothers are going to deliver us and keep us in all of our ways during the evil days, man. During the times that, that, that you know, what it seems like we have no uh, way out. All right, it says, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Least thou dash thy foot against a stone. All right, and that's why the scripture says that what? That the stones shall be in league with us. Is that the Job, the fifth chapter? All right, hey, man, we're, we're legit coming into times where, you know, we can't even fathom, you know, how, how miraculous our salvation, you know, and our deliverance is out of different perils are going to be, man. You know, it, it's just, it's, you know, we just got to hope and pray that the Lord sees us worthy to be able to, you know, uh, uh, be delivered and escape these things, as it says in the book of Daniel, uh, book of Luke 21. So this is something else. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but we're just going to run through it real quick. It says, uh, prepare for mass public quarantine in, of unjuiced rural Americans. And if you, um, if you have uh, watched my last video that I did, or two videos ago, where it speaks about, uh, spoke about Jade Helm and the clusters of uh, of the unjuiced uh, people, you know, it's in the, it's basically in the south south um, south of uh, of America, you know, through from Texas, Arkansas, um, where else, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, you know, that area is where they saying that that cluster is, and here you have now, you know. A, a, a Department of Homeland Security training course to prepare for mass public quarantine of unjuiced uh, rural Americans. It says the Department of Homeland Security has a training course available to law enforcement, health care workers, and other government employees that will detail to prepare. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop this here because, uh, you know, this might be a little bit too long. So I'm going to stop this here, right? And I'm going to just have this focus on the plagues. And I'm going to come back and do another video uh, speaking about this. Okay, but before I do that, let me get, you know, uh, the scripture right here. In the book of Matthew 24, verse uh, 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, so what you are seeing, you know, you have also happened in the West Coast. They're talking about there's a... Uh, you know, a, a drought like never before seen as well. All right, um, uh, over there in, in California. So you having these plagues and, and these pestilences, you know, hit this earth, hit Babylon the Great specifically, man. Okay, so you know, you have that happening. What else did I have? Um, yeah, actually, I didn't finish that, but yeah. So I'm gonna end that right here, and I, like I said, Lord willing, I'm gonna come back. You know, with this uh, next article to, to finish this up too. So, you know, for now, giving all praise on and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rukakudash. So, next time, Shalom.